Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome you again to Riding Tiger with Arijit Patacharya. And today I have a brilliant person from Africa. Victor, welcome to the show. Thank you, Arijit. My pleasure. And thank you for having me. Super. So for the audience, uh, Victor is actually a change maker and Victor is uh, from Lagos, Nigeria, one of my favorite places for travel destination. And Victor, to be very honest, I have a couple of great friends from your place itself. Uh, talking about Victor, Victor is actually a change maker. He's a advisory board member at Startup Agenda. And Victor is always in for anything which is related to SME and MSME. As all, we all know, SMEs are actually building block for any kind of economy. And when we talk about riding a tiger, people usually think that why this podcast name is Riding Tiger, what's this Riding Tiger is all about. So tiger is actually a metaphor. Tiger is your business. As an entrepreneur, when you start your journey and you start an option in life that you are going to take risk, the risk is a never ending journey. Journey of someone who can actually ride on the top of tiger and you need to feed it. And when you are feeding it, you can't overfeed it. It will become fatty. You can't underfeed it. It will become slow, hungry. It may kill you. So when you are an entrepreneur, you are a change maker. In my personal opinion, entrepreneurs always go for passion and ride with passion. On that riding, you need a food to feed to your tiger. That food is actually money. And when we are talking about SMEs, MSMEs, building block, Africa, that's the place which is actually growing faster than light. We all can see that Africa, things are happening like anything. I have got a lot of, lot of people who are following me in social media. I know people who are into graphics. I know people who are into politics. I know people who are actually working amazing with agriculture, with women empowerment from Africa itself. So let me not speak. Let us hear everything from our speaker, how he is watching the SME growing in his own country and in his own continent. So over to you, Victor, would love to understand what are the perspective and what are the changes that is happening in Africa and how you can see it and how you are becoming a catalyst to help others. Brilliant, Arjit. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So the, the XME ecosystem in Africa, or use Nigeria as a case study, is pretty uh, very interesting. So for instance, uh, less than 48 hours ago, OPE, uh, a, a bike hailing company in uh, Nigeria, uh, unlocked uh, 400 million uh, US dollars. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, that is uh, aside uh, Africa, I mean, unlocking funds somewhere around uh, 31.0 trillion US dollars, just only in uh, 2020, making Nigeria, for instance, stand as uh, the biggest uh, investment destination for anybody who has interest to uh, come do business in Africa. So these this indices and statistics, alongside uh, the fact that uh, of the 41 million uh, businesses that operate in Nigeria, 96% of them are SMEs, meaning that uh, somewhere around 80% uh, of the employment that has been provided in Africa or in Nigeria, as the case may be, have been, uh, I mean, provided by SMEs. So. Uh, it's 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 interesting to know that the SME ecosystem in Nigeria is actually waxing strong with interesting startups, with interesting founders doing big things, and uh, the prospects are massive. If you ask me, especially as it relates to fintech, agritech, uh, commerce, uh, logistics, and every other sector that supports uh, growth growth across uh, all the key sectors of uh, the Nigerian economy. So. What are the prospects? If you ask me, I would say the prospects are massive. The prospects are huge across all sectors because Nigeria, for instance, is a developing nation. And what it means is that there is uh, opportunities across healthcare, opportunities across education, opportunities across trade, opportunities across 
commerce, opportunities across logistics, opportunities across financial services, opportunities across uh, banking, and all sectors are, if you ask me, uh, heated and stimulated because the kind of uh, news that comes out of uh, the nation as, as the days go by is something to go, is something that is encouraging and keeping uh, founders on their toes and uh, making us all to, uh, I mean, keep on our, being on our feet and finding ways around uh, providing solutions that solve everyday human problems. Amazing, amazing. So what are the kind of industries and clusters that is growing in Africa? Irrespective of the fact funding is there or not, I understand um, if your business is growing, you have clients and you can actually sustain with your clients money. That's one of the best options to grow your business. Once you get investment into your company, that means you're probably looking for scale up, you're probably looking for expansion. And with that expansion, investment always acts as a biggest catalyst. But getting investment is not key to success. Probably getting investment is one step to go towards the success. Africa being a country, or rather a continent, Africa being a continent and uh, Nigeria being a country, which is uh, probably well focused enough into a lot of different variety of clusters. Could you please enlighten us about the kind of clustral development that's happening in Nigeria? Brilliant, Arijit. Um, like I mentioned earlier, virtually all the sectors in uh, Nigeria at the moment are heated up. If you ask me, I like to use the word heated up because a lot of activities are ongoing. So, for instance, agri agriculture has, uh, is picking up, uh, finance is picking up, uh, commerce is picking up, um, yeah, logistics is picking up, fintech is picking up. Virtually all sectors across Nigeria at the moment are at, at, are actually trying to pick up at their at their highest uh, premium, even including uh, healthcare. And uh, some of the reasons are our current administration, even though they've not done uh, pretty well as we expect, but our current uh, president, President Mohamed Wari, has been. I guess some network leaks during the session. Uh, up, up to speed in uh, the road networks. And these are key infrastructure that helps to connect trade. And of course, yes, when trade is connected, certainly economy is uh, definitely going to be pointing upwards, basically. So if you ask me, finance is doing extremely well. Agri agriculture is doing uh, extremely well. Not, not like they are, uh, they are fully developed, but I mean, they are, there's, there are a lot of uh, heated prospects, a lot of heated transactions, a lot of uh, heated conversations conversations, a lot of heated um, engagement going on in these sectors. And of course, yes, these are the sectors that uh, are looking up very strong. Healthcare, agriculture, fintech, uh, finance, logistics are doing extremely well as it stands right now in Nigeria. Wow. I mean, finance means what kind of finance? Is it uh, related to the stock market that that thing is going great? Or it is something else like banking? What is the situation that over there? Banking, banking most especially. Okay, so how about the people who are non-bankable? What is their situation? How they're coping up with the market? As for my understanding, while working with a lot of crypto companies in my life, as an advisor to these companies to go for licensing and go for structural development for their business, I got to know that Africa as a continent, as a market, is a huge market for alternative money, crypto and digital banking. Could you please enlighten us that what is the exact situation, how things are coming up over there? Brilliant. Um, Arjit, with the, with, the, with the kind of news that has come out uh, with uh, startups like uh, OP, startups like um, Flutterwave, startups like, uh, I mean, all the pretty interesting fintechs that have unlocked funds recently in Nigeria. Uh, the unbanked, uh, the unbanked communities are not left out with uh, having pretty interesting uh, support systems. Like, I mean, there has been uh, an, an an explosion of uh, 
on banks on banks financial service providers like kuda who have uh, ensured for instance like mama money who have ensured that the unbanked uh, population or the unbanked segment of, of nigeria tend to have uh, access to funding tend to have access to savings tend to have access to every other thing that the guys who are in uh, the urban cities have access to basically so if you ask me it's uh, an all-inclusive, so to say, an all-inclusive sector-driven or sector uh, support systems that have been ongoing in Nigeria. And I'm not sure there is anybody, even my mother in the village, uh, of course, has uh, access to opportunities as, at this time. Great. And uh, if I am not wrong, uh, when we usually look at Naira as a currency, we always have a tendency to probably compare that with the global ecosystem. And I have seen that the valuation is actually increasing. That means the country's situation is actually increasing, which means the GDP of a country is eventually increasing. So in your opinion, what do you feel? How exactly things can be matured on latest technology, innovation, and impact of such kind of innovation into your country. Example, if I take an example of uh, probably uh, virtual reality as an implementation factor, or probably going to go digital as an implementation factor uh, for the mainly for the SMEs. Let me give you my perspective. If we look at uh, the growing countries, I actually help the local SMEs and MSMEs to uh, grow their business, become digital, and then become a brand into the global ecosystem itself and we help them to go for go to market we connect them with the exact right kind of partner we help them with connecting with the investors the right kind of uh, partnership models uh, legal aspects we help with financial aspects almost everything so does such kind of uh, service exist in nigeria and if yes how you are tackling that would love to know it Brilliant, Arjit. Uh, like I mentioned, the ecosystem in Nigeria is heated and uh, across all sectors. If, if that's how I started earlier. Uh, and that has led to an explosion of uh, MSME support uh, organizations emanating from virtually every nook and cranny of Nigeria. For instance, we have MSME Business Development Services. Uh, that is being run by Ambassador Dr. Peter Ayim, uh, who is the council chairman of uh, um, nine MSME support. Try to, from the grassroots, ensure that uh, digitalization is uh, implemented right to the core of where businesses emanate, which is at the grassroots, if you ask me. Uh, of course, these services, along with uh, services like Future Africa, along with other organizations like uh, uh, MSME, uh, MSME growth, uh, ang growth uh, angle, or growth tackle, that's, that's what they call them. I can't get the name right now. These are all, uh, all inclusive uh, MSME business development support service organizations that ensure that digitalization is happening. So if you ask, my, if you ask me directly, I would say uh, business development support is uh, heated, just like uh, the ecosystem is heated, like I mentioned. And of course, yes, once, once there is uh, trade and commerce, and once there is trade and commerce, what that comes with is uh, brilliant uh, cluster support systems also emanating and brilliant support systems also, uh, I mean, being uh, utilized or being implemented. And what you find is end-to-end uh, -end business support groups along uh, across board and across uh, sectors and across the value chains. That is what the situation is in Nigeria at the moment. Super, super. Really, really great. And I was actually reading in your profile that you want to create a group of companies uh, in, in almost every part of the world. And uh, you have a desire, hardcore desire, when you um, probably when you become 45, just before that, you want to go for a complete worldwide uh, integration of that kind of structure. For an example, maybe expanding your company to 
almost every part of the world. So we as a as an ecosystem, we as a business club, if you know, we support a lot of lot of events. Like last event that you spoke in Biz Talk, that is actually supported by World Leaders Summit. If you know that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So you have probably seen our yellow logo over there. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have around 95 countries uh, business network, and we have uh, multiple ambassadors and chairperson in our community. Um, so the reason I'm sharing this to all the audience and with you, because I can see a passion of a person who wants to grow and build his company big like anything before he gets retired. Could you please talk a little about your childhood and about your life and how did you come up with such kind of encouragement uh, and energy? Okay, uh, brilliant, Arjit. This is, uh, if you ask me, a very interesting question. So I grew up uh, under uh, parents who were both bankers. My father was a banker, my mother was a banker. And uh, personally, I would say from my personal experience uh, at the time, uh, we were broke when they were bankers. That's the honest truth. Uh, but I found that life had meaning in the reality of it when my parents uh, retired and then started doing business. Uh, so yeah, for instance, we had more cars, more cars at the, in, in the garage. We had more, more food to eat and we had more, a more luxurious life. So at a very tender age, I, I began to understand that my dad had control of his life. He had control of, um, by the way, my father is a business owner as well. And he's, uh, he's, the, he's the chairman of uh, the board of uh, Views Group, which houses the five companies for which uh, Vic Force Integrated Solutions, which is the arm that I manage directly, operate under. So I found that uh, life was better when my father started doing business. Uh, but the thing is, I think he started late. Yeah, because he was already uh, somewhere around 50 or 60 before he started. So in my opinion, I felt if he had started earlier, maybe he would have uh, built Views Technical, which is his own company. He would have built Views Technical to become a world-class multinational company. So in my, in my, as now cycling back to my days in the university, I left uh, school knowing that I would work just to gain the experience, but ultimately I would own five companies operating out of Nigeria into Asia, Middle East, Europe, and uh, maybe two countries in Africa, basically. So if you ask me, right from when I was 30, I knew I was going to work, but uh, by the time I'm 50, I expect or I hope to have um, built a views group to become uh, a company that would it would have at least a value of somewhere around uh, maybe 500,000 to a million uh, US dollars. That's where I hope that, that's where I hope our company can be in another maybe six to eight months, basically. And uh, yes, this, so the, the, the background of my home or the background of my growing up was like um, a factor that helped uh, shape or redefine my thinking or redefine my, uh, my approach or redefine my thinking about um, business ownership, basically. And then uh, my dad's experience also kind of supported uh, my delving into owning businesses, if you ask me. That's uh, a little about my history. Amazing. And I can see that you are um, actually, you, you worked as a vice chairman in a sport career company, which is basically a division of career gateway plus limited and the website is uh, for the audience is actually sportcarrier.ng tell us about it i'm curious because i actually um, invested in one uh, sports company which is basically uh, indian one which is completely different than maybe your ecosystem and in our world leader summit ecosystem we have a sports committee uh, which is headed by a uh, italian gentleman who is directly connected with uh, a lot of celebrities in Olympics and all. And we have another ambassador from Australia. He is, of course, a legend in football. Tell us something about your seven years experience as a vice chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Arjit. I'm, 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 I'm pretty uh, excited. You actually made time to 
look at my profile and asking me real interesting personal questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Sport Carrier Company still exists and of course will still continue to exist. Uh, I had along the way somewhere when while I was working at Samsung, I was contacted by uh, a company called Tiki Taka Football Development Company. They're based in Sweden. Uh, who uh, approached me to join them, uh, launch a, pro a project in Nigeria that tends to identify or spot talent and then uh, export them to Europe, to Sweden precisely, Spain, Germany, France, uh, and sign them to teams. Uh, while that was a pro bono opportunity, I, I, I took it up and then in, in my, as a person, I, I usually do not spend or fain away from opportunities. When I see them, I get involved and then pick the learnings from them basically so sport career company still exists and uh, at the moment we once in a while uh, we try to arrange uh, travel and tour arrangements for footballers uh, we also try to arrange uh, what we call a scouting tournaments to uh, bring scouts from Europe to see players in Nigeria and then uh, try to see if we can uh, engage some of these uh, scouts to sign uh, these interesting talents to teams in Europe. Well, we have only in the last seven years signed one player to a team in um, Malta. Uh, however, after that, uh, the others who have uh, traveled to Europe are not able to sign teams. But of course, yes, we had one boy who just returned from Belarus uh, three days ago. His name is uh, Jerry Ogadima. He went to, uh, they call them metallic. Metallic in uh, Belarus. That's a Premier League team. He had trials there for one week, but uh, I think he's, he had issues that relate to his uh, fitness. So he had to return home and was asked to return back in January. So end to end, uh, Career Gateway Plus or Sport Career Company, which is the uh, uh, which is the brainchild of Career Gateway Plus is uh, still in the business of trying to create a visibility for young talents across Nigeria to sign to teams in Europe, having uh, undergone uh, trials, having undergone screening. And then uh, if that happens, we stand in as um, intermediaries to ensure that end-to-end -end contract papers are signed, end-to-end -end legal papers are well. Well taken care of and end to end. Super, super. Uh, don't worry about the network. It sometimes happens that network is actually uh, becoming a little bit of which it, we all understand this. This is online world that we are actually living in. So everyone understands that. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I guess I guess I've got a fair amount of idea. I've got a fair amount of idea about uh, the kind of amazing work that you're doing. I can I can tell the audience that uh, Victor is actually a, a very profound mentor. He <laughs> and uh, not only support, he handhold the startups. And he's mentoring for quite a long number of time. And uh, not only that, Victor, which you are actually watching him from Lagos, Nigeria itself, is an enterprise design practitioner certified by IBM as well. Man, I can talk about you probably the entire night, the kind of work that you have done so far. You have amazing experience working with corporates to SMEs to MSMEs, and now you are giving back. Very few people in the world have such kind of mentality. And the reason I'm asking you, Christian, pointing to exactly to your, your life, because I actually loved you. I actually loved the way you are growing. And when I when I said that, let's have a chat in Riding Tiger, the reason I was asking you because I wanted the world to know about you. Well, Victor, thank you so much. But this is the time we usually go for a rapid fire round. And the rapid fire round is like, I'm going to ask you, Christian, whatever comes in your mind, you have to give me answer immediately. Are you ready? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Arijit. <laughs> Are you ready for it? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Super. Your favorite color? Green. Favorite football player? 
Beckham. Your favorite food? Beans. If I ask you to choose between uh, a life, and if I ask you to choose uh, between pleasure, which one will you choose? I'll choose life. Amazing. One liner statement, what is life for you? Life is uh, living, life is giving, life is supporting, life is showing empathy, life is being uninclusively involved in other people's progress. What is, That's what, secret, life is what is the secret of your amazing smile? Well, the fact that I have hope that I'll become very, very famous, especially with the work that I do. That's the secret of my smile. <laughs> Okay, if I ask you to choose uh, a superhero in your life, who is your superhero in your life? I'll say my dad. My father is my hero. I, I, I think I, I learned doing business from him. My dad is 76 or thereabout now. Uh, I, I said this to someone yesterday. In the last 40 years I have known him, he leaves, his, he leaves home every day by 7 a.m. He has never, he has never, even, even the times when he has stayed three months and he didn't make one sale. But his culture, he leaves home every day by 7 a.m. I learned being, uh, be, being there through my father. So he's my hero. I learned a lot from him. Super. If I ask you to choose uh, wiseness and money, which one will you choose? Wisdom is always better than money. Amazing. Victor, it's been a pleasure. I wish you all the success in your life and I'm sure that you're gonna reach and hit your milestone very soon. I'm all in, all there for any kind of support, any kind of help that you need. And uh, for the audience, we actually have a large group of investor pool who usually support cross-country investment, be that loan, be that VC, be that angel. So please feel free to connect with us, get back to, your, uh, uh, to us and wait for a surprise we are coming with our mega summit this year once again last year wls happened with 126 speakers change makers politicians sports personalities from 90 plus countries this year we're gonna have it with 95 plus countries with a targeted 150 speakers change makers scientists and you can see those posts that's happening you can see the vibration and you can see the kind of change maker that is there with us who wants to grow with the entire world. And Victor is an example. Thank you so much, Victor, for being with me, talking, sharing the entire life and the passion. It shows that we're gonna have a beautiful time in the world because we have you who is supporting the entire ecosystem. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Arijit, for having me. It's, it's, it's a pleasure, honestly, having this talk with you. And uh, to be honest, I look forward to uh, handshakes. I look forward to collaborating further. I look forward to deepening this engagement. And above all, I look forward to speak at the World Summit. That's, 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 that will be it for me, honestly. Super, Victor.